Hey guys, today I want to do a quick video going over how to update the SSL certificate on your Supermicro IPMI motherboard. So this is going to be your server motherboard. Um, this is taking into account if you've uh, already updated the BIOS and the BMC to the latest versions. Um, a lot of the motherboards, especially if you bought a used one on like eBay or Amazon or something, is going to have a SSL certificate that's going to be expired and it's going to give you uh, an unsecure connection warning when logging into the IPMI. So just a kind of a good practice to do. I've already done mine but I can still go over the process with you just to get this updated. So uh, you're going to want to start off with going to the IPMI address so you can type that into just any web browser and then you're going to log in. Uh, you'll be presented with this login screen so go ahead and log in there. So the default is admin admin if you uh, reset the IPMI or if it's never been changed. Uh, I did change my password, but so I'll go ahead and log in. Okay, and just ignore this Java pop up here and we're going to go to configuration and SSL certifi certi certification and then um, as you can see mine uh, is good for another 10 years I just updated it the other day but um, when I first bought this motherboard it was uh, had expired in 2018 so it was just a good practice to update so this guide is for Linux so um, this takes into account that you have a Linux server that you can use to uh, make this change. It's pretty pretty simple. So once you log into your Linux server and have your working directory, uh, this can be uh, via the your home or just a, a hard drive. In my case, I have it on a hard drive uh, hooked up to my Linux file server. And then you're going to follow by inserting the fo the following uh, command: um, uh, open SSL gen g e n r s a uh, space dash out PVT PEM and then uh, 248 for uh, or 2048 for 2048 uh, encryption. So we'll go ahead and uh, run this command, and it's going to generate our our RSA private key. So that's all done now, and then we're going to go ahead and insert the following line. And this is op open SSL space REQ space dash new space dash key space pvt dot pem space dash out space uh, crt dot pem go ahead and run this and then it's going to ask just for some basic uh, information so your country name uh, I'm in the US I'll go ahead and put that a state or province I'm in the state of Oregon so I'll put Oregon uh, Look, local uh, name like city or etc. I'm just in the Portland area, so I'll go ahead and put that Portland um, organization. Uh, I'm just going to put the name of the motherboard, and mine is the XDRD X9DRD IF. So I'll go ahead and put that, and I'll, I'm just going to put the same. I'll go ahead and leave uh, the rest of these blank. Okay, and then the next step is to output the open SSL certificate. So I'll go ahead and put this, and I'll go ahead and put these commands uh, in the uh, YouTube uh, description down below so you can just copy and paste them, just makes it easy. Uh, the default would be about one year for 365 days. I went ahead and just set it out to be a 10 year uh, SSL key. This isn't a web facing. Um, Certificate. I'm not going to open up this port to uh, to the internet or the IP address for this. Uh, I do run uh, a web server off this, just kind of for personal use. But no one's going to be able to see this unless they gain access to my home network. So I'm not really concerned about the length of time. Normally, you probably wouldn't want to do a 10-year certificate, but just for um, you know ease sake, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So go ahead and hit enter, and then it's going to generate the keys. 
Okay, and then you're going to navigate back to uh, the Supermicro IPMI web interface and we're going to do new SSL certificate and go ahead and choose file. And then we're going to go to the correct location. I have mine stored on my Linux server. And then so I'm just going to navigate here and it's asking for, this is for the certificate, so go ahead and hit uh, crt.pem. Okay. And then now we need to choose the private key. So we'll go ahead and select the private key. That's uh, the pvt.pem. So go ahead and select that. And then just hit the upload button. And it's going to say SSL certificate already exists. Loading a new certificate will replace the existing certificate. Do you want to continue? You go ahead and hit OK. OK. And then it's going to take a minute to update here. And then now I get a certificate with key was uploaded successfully. The device needs to be reset for the new certificate to be effective. Click OK if you want to reset the device. If you click OK, you'll have to reconnect to the device with a new browser session. Click Cancel if you want to reset. And so if this is like a production server where you can't afford to take the system down, obviously you would uh, reset this kind of during non-business hours, but in my case, this is just a home server and nobody's connected to it right now, so I'll go ahead and hit OK. And then the device will uh, reboot itself. And it will uh, reconnect automatically. So pretty pretty simple process. And like I said, I'll go ahead and put the um, those uh, commands down in the description. But you know, I find it really useful just the IPMI interface in itself. Um, other than the, the annoying fact that you have to have Java installed to do some of the more advanced things, but uh, you can review like the kind of system temperature and like the fan speed stuff like that. Um, so you know, pretty useful. All right, looks like it's ready for us. So go ahead and log back in. And remember, the default is admin admin if you haven't uh, changed the password yourself. All right, we're gonna go uh, review the certificates again. So it's again, configuration, uh, SSL, uh, cert uh, go ahead and cancel here, and then configuration, SSL certification. And then as you can see, my certificate is now valid from 11-14-2019. And then until 11, 11, 20, 29. So, um, yeah, it's nice. Uh, it must be a leap year in there or something. But, um, yeah, so find it useful. You know, pretty easy to update the certificate, especially at Linux. You can do the same uh, on other operating systems or Windows. Uh, but this guide is just specifically for, like, Linux. I used Ubuntu, but this should work on uh, other versions. But I hope you found this video useful. And go ahead and uh, give this video a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. Thanks.